Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm here at uh, Germany's biggest uh, investor fair, the Invest in Stuttgart. It's a uh, home play for us because we live close to Stuttgart and I'm very, very happy to have uh, Warwick Grigor with me today here because he's the chairman of uh, First Gryphene Limited, an Australian gryphene producer. And uh, Warwick was uh, in Berlin attending the uh, ID Tech uh, uh, Investor Fair and uh, Technology Fair which is very important for the industry and uh, today he stopped uh, in Stuttgart and uh, we will talk to him about uh, First Graphene, the production uh, we have uh, seen so far and uh, what is uh, Graphene used for and uh, how he does see the outlook and the potential for the company. Hi Warwick, welcome you to uh, Stuttgart. Thank you Wolfgang, nice to be here. My pleasure. Uh, Warwick, uh, you have been in Berlin uh, attending the ID Tech uh, uh, fair. It's uh, the uh, industry's biggest technology uh, fair in uh, Germany and maybe worldwide. Uh, can you give us an idea what experience you got there because you have attended some uh, times before and uh, tell us about the, 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 the fair. Well, there's very strong interest in, in graphene. It's new to many people still and there's, we've had a lot of inquiries about how we could use our graphene and our technologies to benefit their industries. That's good. So the industry is reflecting uh, a lot of interest. Um, the company has announced uh, during the first quarter that it's now in commercial production, meaning you can produce graphene. How many graphene producers do we have on the planet? Not so much. Well, there's probably 50 or 60 companies that can make a kilogram here or a kilogram there. But there's only a handful of companies that can do more than 10 tons per annum. We actually have a capacity to do up to 100 tons per annum, which would make us one of the largest independent producers of graphene in the world today. So you would be one of the most interesting companies for the uh, industry in regard of supply of uh, the uh, demand, the potential demand. Yeah, the big problem has been supply. A lot of companies have wanted to use graphene, but they haven't been able to get regular supply. We can now supply it in bulk for industries such as coatings, uh, fire retardancy, concrete, and we're one of the first, if not the first, supplier of low cost, high quality bulk graphene in the world today. So you produce the graphene in Australia, in Henderson you have a facility which you have developed in-house with your technical stuff, but where is the uh, raw material coming from? We mine that from Sri Lanka. We've got our own mines that we're developing. They'll be long life, 10 and 20 year mines. In addition, we're buying any other material that we can get, which is of the 97% grade. And the only other company that's supplying that at the moment is the government mine. And we're building our stockpiles ready for the increase in demand that we're expecting over the next few years. So actually you control, you control the uh, supply of the raw material by yourself and the government and the offtake you have. So that's a pretty uh, solid uh, basis to uh, deliver the end product. Uh, what, what about graphene? What are the advantages? Why is the industry so hungry and interested in that new technology and new uh, product? The beauty of graphene is what you mix it with. By adding as little as 1% to many materials, you can get 50 to 100% improvement in performance, in, in strength, in conductivity, um, in, in uh, flexibility as well. It's, it's something that, it's amazing what it can do for such a small additive. People say that it's expensive, but it's not. If you consider, you don't need much. So a little bit goes a long way. And it, we're still, we're still learning just how many different applications you can use it for. Polymers is very important. Um, th th that's one of the areas we're concentrating on that because there's enormous potential for sales in that area. Very interesting. Can you explain a little bit uh, to our investor community what's all about those three corporations you have with the universities in Australia? three universities. The first one is Swinburne. We're developing what we call the best battery, which is the next generation of energy storage devices. It's not a chemical based. You don't have the risk of fires like you have with lithium ion. You'd be able to recharge your mobile phone in 10 seconds. The battery would last not 
1,000 cycles to 10 and 20,000 cycles. It's a whole new generation. Now we're, we're developing that with the Swinburne University, with Adelaide University, we're working on fire retardancy, graphene in concrete, in paints, in insulation, uh, a lot of areas there. And then with, with Flinders, we're working on secondary processing to get higher quality graphene. We're working on, um, on graphene oxide, which, which is very exciting. Graphene oxide can do lots of wonderful things, but it's very expensive to make and involves a lot of chemicals. We're working on a new method, which is much more environmentally friendly and lower cost. So between those three universities, we've got some very good brains working for us. So there are a lot of markets you could uh, develop and expand, and obviously it's uh, maybe a little bit too early to say how many opportunities you will develop uh, in the near future, right? Or in the long term. But uh, now being a graphene producer, can investors expect any revenues now for, let's call it this calendar year? Yeah, I, I fully expect that within a few months of today, we could have quite significant sales. We may even manage to negotiate an offtake agreement for all that we can produce, but we, that might take a few months to negotiate. But perhaps the first sales we'll have, I expect them to be in, uh, in polymers for fire retardancy. Our fire stop fire retardant, we'll have that tested by the government agency within the next few months and that will open the door to sales before the end of this year. This is going to be the critical year for launching the revenue streams. And, and down the road, uh, First Graphene could also open up a business model like you license uh, your developments with the university to other bigger companies, major companies, and uh, they can develop the product. Is that uh, the correct understanding? Yeah, what we want to do is develop the IP and license that out, collect royalties, so that we don't dilute our shareholders by becoming manufacturers. We, we don't want to, we want return on capital. And the best thing is to go to people already in industry and say, hey, we've got something that will make your product much better and let them do the hard work of manufacturing and we'll just click license and royalty fees. That's a smart way to make money. And actually with uh, the uh, selling of Gryphene you have a partner called Traxxas, right? Uh, as I understand it's a worldwide uh, metal uh, trading company. So uh, can you give us a little bit of an idea of that? Which is also a big help to have such a well-established uh, partnership with one. They have already the access to the industry, right? Yeah, because Traxxas do six billion dollars worth of agency sales each year 20 offices around the world they've been studying the opportunity for graphene for the last 12 months and they've come up with some strategies that will create much greater depth in the graphene market they already deal with companies like tesla panasonic samsung they supply cobalt lithium uranium lots of specialist materials they want to pioneer the graphene market and they're prepared to put money up to build stockpiles. If we as a junior Australian company went to Panasonic and said we can deliver the graphene, they'll say yeah, you and whose army? Because they've never heard of us before. But having Traxxas, they've already got them as customers, they're the door openers and they will play a very important role in much more rapidly commercializing our production. Okay, oh, that's, that's very exciting. So we have to outline maybe that uh, First Graphene Limited is an Australian public traded company, but we have also listed them on the uh, Frankfurt Stock Exchange. We have a lot of uh, investors and shareholders now also in Europe. Uh, we should say that we both are shareholders of the company. I'm the consultant, uh, but I have shares in the company and that's a conflict of interest potentially, which we have to outline and uh, Warwick as chairman, he has also Uh, a very good background, by the way, as an investor and broker in his uh, first career. Um, so, uh, what do you see, uh, Warwick, in terms of a future share price potential of the company? Do you have any guessing? I know we have to be careful because you're part of management, you own also your own shares. But to give an idea of uh, investors, what, what could we tell them? 
Well, I'm not going to be happy until this is at least $500 million in size. One of the reasons why I retired as, as uh, chairman of Canaccord was I wanted the time and the capital to put into a business that'll be a 10 and 20 year growth curve. It's, it's not a cyclical thing where you've got to trade it. it you, you get set now, you grow with it, and the growth curve is exponential from this point. So we've seen companies with higher market capitalizations than ours, which are not as advanced as ours. We just have to get our message across there and make sure investors realize that we're very serious. We, we are developing graphene from the entire value chain, from the raw material, through the production of graphene and into the end uses. So we will have multiple sources of revenue streams. It's a growth business and I don't see any reason why I should put a ceiling on how far this is going. But my first target is $500 million in size. $500 million in sales? Market capitalization. Market cap. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's, that's the number. And uh, I think uh, nobody has missed uh, the train so far or the boat. Uh, we represent the company since two and a half years and uh, it has been uh, an incredible growth story since then because uh, at the beginning it was only, let's call it the mine in uh, Sri Lanka as a graphite producer and now we have a technology company. It's a different company if you like and that's uh, certainly the growth driver and potential of that uh, uh, listed company here. So thank you very much for the um, interview and uh, conversation we have had. I wish you all the best by developing uh, all those opportunities and outlet and hopefully we can succeed soon. Revenues in the company by selling uh, graphene and then of course the market cap will increase sooner or later. Thank you very much. Thanks Wolfgang, pleasure to be here.